tech hardware is back. Intel is soaring in the pre-market in the first quarter. It logged a 34% jump in profit, 25% gain in revenue growth. With more on the big spending from big business, we bring in Daniel Berenbaum. He is joining us from Auriga. He's director of research there. He has a buy on Intel. Dan, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Thanks for having me. There were two surprises in this Intel result. Surprise just about how big business is spending big, but in one of your notes you say, you know what, it's not coming from the U.S. Well, so part of the strength was really in the PC client group, which is you know, individual PCs as we think about them, desktop notebook PCs, and a lot of the strength that the company talked about in the quarter was from emerging markets. One of the interesting things is that it was a big disconnect to what consensus has been thinking, because you've seen third-party research reports like Gartner, like IDC. Yeah, we thought the PC was dead. Exactly. Everybody's come out and said, you know, weakest PC environment in years, things are really not growing, and Intel basically came out and blew away numbers in that PC client group. So what does this say, that people still either want or need a desktop machine? Well, there's a couple of things that you can think about. As number one, there are what we call white box manufacturers. In other words, when we think of a PC, we think of HP or Dell or Lenovo, we think of the big brand names. But Intel also sells into white box manufacturers that go into emerging markets and they're off-brand, no-name manufacturers that just buy Intel chips and put them into boxes that go to places like Brazil, emerging markets, etc. The concern there is that maybe Intel doesn't have great visibility onto that either. You know, if Gartner and IDC can't find these PCs, maybe Intel is selling into the channel, maybe there's an inventory build. That's the concern, but the numbers were quite good. So those are the PC chips, but there was also this surprise and strength for the server and corporate data hardware for lack of a better term, exactly. chips. And that came in much stronger than expected as well. So does this mean, I mean, are we turning a page? Are corporate America's chiefs going to invest more and more in, in cloud, in web, all these things that need more chips? Right. Well, I think they have to. And, and this has actually been part of our positive thesis on Intel stock is that you're seeing all of these data center builds. You know, the first stage of, of the cloud, when we talk about cloud computing as if it's some magical thing, it's just a return to centralized computing. So the first stage which of demands the, which, which demands chips. So the first stage of that was, was storage. You know, we're talking about cloud computing. We're talking about putting photos in the cloud. Now, as we get more and more smartphones out there, more tablets out there, those are relatively low-powered computing devices. We need to be able to do calculations somewhere. So Intel selling lots of high-powered chips for servers that are going into data centers from Google, from Facebook, from Amazon. That's a very strong cycle for Intel. Can Intel keep it up? Because you just mentioned cycle, which implies that there's going to be a downtime. Yeah, yeah. Well, it implies there's always a downtime. I mean, this is a very cyclical business, but in terms of that data center build, I think we're still in the early innings of that. I think we're in the early stages. You know, it would not surprise me to see Google, to see these direct customers, which they don't go through HP and Dell. You know, they, they don't buy servers off the shelf. They build their own because it's cheaper and higher performance. Wouldn't surprise me to see some of these direct customers becoming 10% customers of Intel over the next couple of years. Dan, before we let you go, does a rising tide lift all boats? In other words, from Intel's results, can we say that AMD is going to have just as strong a quarter? Right, so I would say no. And you know, what's interesting is when Intel announced its Sandy Bridge chipset problem back January 31st, you know, the, there were a the, lot of critics there out there. There were a lot of critics out there for Intel, and the perception was that AMD was going to benefit. So AMD stock was up and Intel stock was down. Interesting. So, so what was bad for Intel was supposedly good for AMD. Now what's interesting is after hours, you saw Intel up and AMD up. So now what's good for Intel is good for AMD. So uh, it strikes me that you can't really have it both ways. It strikes me that what is good for Intel is probably bad for AMD. You're probably seeing part of that PC strength, you know, part of its white box, part of its mix, part of it is probably share gain against AMD. Dan, thanks so much for coming in. Thanks for having me. Dan Barenbaum joining us there from Auriga.